الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله The question was asked Can someone be considered a talib al-ilm if they do not go and make a journey to seek knowledge with the ulama they are pro they don't have the means to go abroad and seek knowledge and they just benefit maybe from the tapes and lectures of ulama first and foremost as we know is that ahl sunnah tafawat wa ahl bid'ah tafawat and the people of knowledge tafawat which means that ahl sunnah has different levels ahl bid'ah has different levels and the people of knowledge have different levels and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al karim that he will raise that allah raises those who believe alladina amanu and those who he has given knowledge darajat and those he has given knowledge uh, different levels so that lets us know that indicates for us that people have different levels all of the scholars are not on the same level all of the talab al ilm are not on the same level and so on and so forth and with that being the case the fact that someone is unable to go and benefit but yet they benefit from the books and the tapes of the ulama does not prohibit them from having ilm and that we all or all of those who traverse the path of knowledge to the extent of their ability they will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that as the salaf used to say talib al ilm talib al jannah that seeking knowledge is seeking paradise so that should be our intention but getting more to the point as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man salaka tariqan yaltamasuhu bihi ilman sahala lahu lahu tariqan ila jannah whoever traverses the path of knowledge allah will make easy for him the path to paradise so that Hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wasallam does not restrict a person to only traveling to seek knowledge. However, that is best as the ulama of hadith, as the ulama the mutaqaddimin, those people who came before us, our salaf as-salih ridwanullahi alayhim that they sh- strove to traverse the path of knowledge they went and sought knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they journeyed even just for one hadith so we know that that is the best situation however if someone is unable to do that but they're vigilant in seeking knowledge they'll be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the success there are many people who went away to study and they didn't benefit either they didn't benefit in much knowledge and that could be for many reasons their sins or obstacles their time wasting uh they could have busied themselves with namima and ghiba and things other than talab al ilm and then we find some people who never went away and studied i know people personally who learned arabic in america in fact in my city never having traveled outside the us and in fact this particular individual i can think of he learned he was learning hebrew when we first met him before he became muslim and that is a favor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah blessed him with the ragba the desire and the jud jud you know the itch he had in the in the in the, the the striving and also just the tawfiq to be able to learn languages and so i don't say that we refer to him as a you know going back to for our issues but the point i'm making is that the tawfiq is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that people have different levels so we shouldn't negate 
that ni'ma that someone who has the desire and has strove in their locality has gained. With that being said, a, a point that I do want to make is that what I've seen is there are some brothers who have done some talab al-ilm, alhamd, but not having left America, not having left the UK, and you can see some limitations from their knowledge because a lot of their knowledge was really book knowledge and maybe they came here and there for Umrah and other things to meet, sit with the ulama for a couple of weeks here, a week there, and this is khair kathir. But you find that they have a tendency to fall into more mistakes because of not having the time to sit with the ulama like tea. And what do I mean by that? I mean, when you want a good cup of tea, a good cup of green tea, for example, you steep the tea. You steep it in the, in the cup and you benefit. Likewise, with the ulama, sitting with them, you learn a whole different type. You learn not just what they're saying because ilm huwa qala Allah wa qala Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that knowledge is the Prophet, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and what the Prophet alayhi salatu wa said. And so, but what you gain is you gain manners. You gain how to take knowledge and how to do, dispense knowledge. So you are taking and receiving and you learn adab. And I'll give you an example to be more clear. An example that I've seen and that comes clearly to mind is sitting with Sheikh Abdul Masin al abad one of our imams of this time, of uh, the uh, Emmet Ahlu Sunnah, one of the fathers in Medina. And I remember, and I've mentioned this story before, sitting in a dars in Sunan Tirmidhi, and a question came up about Tahara, and I knew the answer. All right, you know, it was a simple question, or at least something we, you know, you, you know, consider it as a, simp a simple mas'ala, mas'ala we've all taken in one form or another, but I was quick in my mind to say, oh, this is the answer. And to hear that Alam Rabbani, Muhaddith, to say because of the ikhtilaf in the issue, he said, Allahu Alam. I can't remember if he answered and then said, Allahu Alam, but to hear that Imam, when me, nothing, a tawail bil ilm, you know, the smallest, smallest, even if you can associate me with knowledge at all, to answer that question, but yet this Imam said Allah knows best. And so that is humbling. And that is something you gain from the ulama. Likewise, another issue I want to say, while it's relevant to the topic, is this kind of tarbiyah you gain from the ulama, you won't gain from the tapes and the videos necessarily. You won't. I don't think you can, not in the same way. And I'll give you another example. We went to see Sheikh Ali Nasser of Taqi, one of the Imams of Ahl Sunnah in Medina as well. And I was with another Sheikh actually. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him from Haya. And we asked the Sheikh, I asked the Sheikh, since it was my first time meeting him, and we went we went to his house, that was a great Nama. And I asked him about one of the well-known Hizbis. I said, Sheikh, because Sheikh so-and-so is a well-known Hizbi and he, you know, has some issues in takfir. The Sheikh kind of almost jumped on me and said, what do you say? He said, if, he said, do you know that if he heard this from you, that he could take you to the, to the court? And I was really humbled and I was like, whoa, shocked, you know, to hear that from the Sheikh because he's well-known Sheikh Rabi and many ulama have refuted this individual and among Salafis, especially in the Arab world, it's Maruf, the hal of this individual. And you hear the Sheikh, the Sheikh didn't offend him, but the Sheikh just said, the fact that you associated takfir with this man, where's your proof? Walil al the brother who's with me, the Sheikh, then he said, Sheikh, in such and such book, in such and such book, he says this, he says this. What did I learn from that? What was the tarbiyah lesson? The tarbiyah lesson there was to see 
how the ulama don't just quickly rattle their mouths and quickly speak without tathabbat, without affirming, and what, without, uh, you know, by just making claims. But in fact, they 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 are shadid about uh, affirming that something is correct and not just speaking about individuals and making claims or carrying claims and tales. That was an excellent lesson. And even though this person is a known Hezbi, and we regard him as a Hezbi and from Ahl Bid'ah, but if there's no fayda, if there's no benefit in speaking out of, about an individual, then there's no cause for it. Meaning there's no benefit. If there's no Islamic maslaha, meaning that you're not warning the people, you're not... Uh, you know, protecting yourself from this individual or whatever the case may be, you could fall into backbiting. And that shows you how serious it is and that we have to be cautious in all that we do when we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with ilm al-nafi, rizkin tayyibu, amalim al-taqabbilin, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.